What's up everybody, the Overwatch 2019 Storm Rising event launched earlier today, but in addition to that, Jeff Kaplan went live with a few different Overwatch streamers and YouTubers, and actually revealed quite a bit of information regarding what we can expect for the game in the very near future. This includes new game modes, some teasers for the upcoming anniversary event, and perhaps most exciting of all, confirmation of specific upcoming new heroes. This is Master Ian Gamer, and let's get into it. So this interview with Jeff Kaplan was held in a live stream with O'Nickel, Fariha, and Nateson, which are fellow Overwatch YouTubers and streamers that I'm sure you're all familiar with, and in this video I'll be using a few clips from Fariha's stream to emphasize the things that Jeff talked about. If you want to watch the stream for yourself, I will have that linked in the description, so feel free to check it out. Anyways, getting on to what Jeff actually talked about, there was quite a lot to cover, so I'm going to break up everything he said into two separate categories. The simpler things that are just interesting things to touch on and won't require a whole lot of in-depth analysis, followed by the things that are much more in-depth and offer a ton of speculation for us to consider, and overall I found to be just a lot more interesting. So starting off with the small things, he did confirm that the Havana map will become a standard PvP map and will be hitting the PTR very soon. We basically already knew this, just because we would assume they do the same thing they did with Rialto last year, and if you want my guess, it's probably going to be hitting the PTR sometime next week. He did also specify that the PvP version of Havana will be a different time of day and have different weather. So sadly, that seems to suggest that there won't be a hurricane on the standard version of the map, which is a little disappointing because I thought it was a very cool weather effect they added for the PvE mission. The next small thing he touched on was that Blizzard is very interested in allowing cross-platform play for people on consoles and PC, but that it's incredibly challenging from a technical and business standpoint. Now this is something that Blizzard has talked about from time to time in the past, and more or less I'm pretty sure Jeff was saying here that cross-platform play ideally would be something they could do, but isn't something that we should be getting our hopes up for. Kind of disappointing, but really not that unexpected. The next thing he talked about I will be playing a quick clip for, which is that comics are in fact in development and will be coming back at some point in the future. Are there any plans for any new comics coming out anytime soon? We have comics in development. Um, we had a little bit of a slip of when we thought they were going to come out, so they're a little bit later than we would like, but we actively have comics in development. So the fact that Jeff mentions that comics are something they have been working on, but perhaps they misestimated how long it would take to actually get them finished, makes me wonder if Storm Rising was originally going to have a comic associated with it, but that they just simply weren't able to get the comic done in time for the event. It would be actually pretty sad if that's how it ended up being, because it implies that there may be more story tied to this event, which we simply don't see because it was in the comic, which has maybe been scrapped, or maybe we'll eventually see it in the future at some point, or maybe, to be honest, they never even were planning to do one for Storm Rising. It's just the way that Jeff talks about it here that makes me suspect that perhaps they had a little bit more in mind for this event than what we actually ended up getting. It would be rather unfortunate if that is the case, but we'll probably honestly never really know for sure. Another thing he mentioned was that there are no major reworks currently planned for any of the existing heroes, so don't expect anything on the scale of the Torbjorn or Symmetra rework coming anytime soon, no immediate plans for Overwatch to go permanently free to play, and for the last of these small topics, Jeff talked about how he would be interested in adding Overwatch to the Nintendo Switch, but that he doesn't have anything to announce at the time being regarding whether or not that's something that's actually going to happen. Now, I could very easily see Overwatch coming to the the Nintendo Switch. I mean, Blizzard did it with Diablo 3 not that long ago, so I could very easily see them adding a game like Overwatch to it as well. Do I think they will actually end up doing it? Eh, I really don't know. That's one that I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts about, so be sure to let me know whether or not you think it'll be coming to the Nintendo Switch by leaving a comment down below. Anyways, getting onto the really interesting information now, Jeff Kaplan went ahead and straight up confirmed that Sojourn, the character we see in here, here in the Storm Rising event will in fact be a future hero. And Sojourn is a very big and important character in Overwatch, so I'm really excited for our players to learn more about her, and uh, they're definitely going to see more Sojourn in, in the future. Oh my gosh. A lot of our heroes, like so Sojourn's a good example, I think Sojourn 
we started development on her in I want to say 2015. It might have even been 2014. Oh, oh. However, he did also go on record saying that Sojourn won't be Hero 31, and also reiterated that Echo won't be Hero 31 as well. Is there any uh, updates with Echo or anything, any plans for that coming up in the future? Um, Echo, um, how do I say this without spoiling to me? Echo is amazing, hero. she's awesome. Um, she is not the next hero. I will tell you that. Um, so that's some good information. Echo is not the next hero. Um, Sojourn is not the next hero. That's all I'm going to say. So as for when we might actually see Sojourn as a character in game, I think it's really tough to say. They could just be introducing her early on to play some sort of long game tease where they show her off, give her a voice, but then don't actually add her for possibly a couple years from now. Or they might be looking to add her as like Hero 32 or 33 sometime sooner relatively, but still, of course, that would be a little ways off. Honestly, we really can't say one way or the other at this point in time. But it is amazing that Jeff straight up confirms that she's a playable hero who's been in development. That now gives us two heroes, Echo and Sojourn, which are confirmed to be upcoming characters. And Jeff even goes so far as to possibly confirm a third, which is the Junker Queen. Let me just play this clip for you here. Are there any plans for uh, Junker Queen anytime soon? Uh, Junker Queen is a character that we love. Um, Arnold has drawn many pictures of her. Uh, she looks awesome. Uh, so there are big plans for Junker Queen. I just deflected uh, while standing on the Kayla box. I paused the wrong thing. Kenji on the Kayla? Big plans, huh? Yeah, Kenji on the Kayla. And I fat figured by E, but it's okay. Yeah, she, she's somebody we very much care about. Um, and want to do cool stuff with, and we know that the players are really excited for her. Uh, so she's a, she's a big opportunity. The shotgun is kind of like a burst fire gun, it's so strange. Uh, a long term opportunity or a short term opportunity? I would say uh, more on the long term front. Okay. okay. Now, the fact that he says they have big plans for Junker Queen could mean any number of things. She might just be an important character who will show up in animated shorts or comics. She might play into the story somehow, but not actually become a playable hero. Well, given how we've seen the devs talk about the Junker Queen in the past, and considering that Arnold Sang, who's one of their concept artists, is apparently drawing a lot of pictures of her, presumably as a way to sort of conceptualize the hero and try out some different designs for what she might look Look like in game, I really, really strongly suspect that Junker Queen will in fact be a playable hero at one point. However, the fact that Jeff also goes on and says that it'll be sort of long term plans, which include the Junker Queen, makes me think that we should probably not be getting our hopes up for her anytime soon. Like maybe two years from now, she'll be a new hero, but in the more shorter scope of things, yeah, it sounds like she's not really gonna be that important or relevant. And the last thing Jeff talked about regarding new heroes is a final end-all be-all confirmation that Jetpack Cat will never be a hero. That's all I'm gonna say. That's, it's not definitely. I said we were never making jetpack cat. No, why did that hurt me like this? Never, 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 ever. <laughs> that would be so ridiculous. I know, it's sad, I'm sure everybody's gonna be shedding tears over this one, but Jetpack Cat will never be a reality. I gotta say though, I simply love the clear amount of frustration in Jeff's voice. I can't imagine how tired him and the other devs must be at this point of hearing people talk about Jetpack Cat. But in case there was any skepticism, this is the end all be all. No Jetpack Cat. In addition to the hero talk though, Jeff also talked quite a bit about Anniversary, and even confirmed that there's gonna be a new surprise feature being added during or around the time of Anniversary. Here's exactly what he had to say about that. We have a feature that nobody's asked about, nobody knows is coming, nobody's thought of or proposed to us yet, that I think is gonna be really, really cool. So, um, you know, we'll be talking about that in the weeks to come as we lead up to anniversary. 
And uh, that's been one of the focuses of the dev team lately. And now, I find it really, really interesting how he points out that it's not something people have asked for. This rules out the possibility of it being something like a roll queue or some kind of replay system or basically any of the really popular ones that you see getting thrown around the forums and Reddit all the time. I'm really curious as for what this is going to be. I imagine at first it sounds a bit concerning hearing Jeff say, oh, we're going to add some big new feature that nobody asked for. But to be honest, I'm confident that Blizzard isn't just going to add some big waste of dev time stupid patch that nobody wants. I'm sure it's going to be something that does catch us off guard, and I do also trust that it's probably going to be pretty cool or fun or interesting or whatever it ends up being. I think it's probably going to be a good addition, and if nothing else, we'll hopefully just mix things up. Oftentimes, new content is good enough if it can just shake up the game and change the experience that we're used to having. So once again, I would love to hear your thoughts about what this could possibly be by leaving a comment down below. What's some sort of big new feature for the game that could positively benefit it, which people haven't really apparently been asking for? In addition to this mysterious new feature, however, Jeff also teases an upcoming skin, and the way he talks about this one is very interesting. Go ahead and tease a certain hero um, that's going to get an awesome uh, anniversary skin. Um, She's everybody's favorite mech pilot, oh. and I think I it would be everybody. the skin that breaks the internet. I've got the new wow. I'll, ju I'll just say that. So that's a little tease. Yeah. The skin that breaks the internet. Diva means you heard it here. here first. So Diva is getting an anniversary skin, which is going to break the internet. Now, I can think of a couple different scenarios that the skin could quote unquote break the internet. First off, it could just be a straight up fan service skin, which I think is the first thing a lot of people are going to consider. I don't think this is necessarily what it's going to be, although it definitely could be. The other main option I have in mind is that it's going to be some kind of ridiculous like meme skin where it has some sort of weird, like, internet referency stuff going on. Because not only would that fit D.Va as a character, given her backstory and the way she acts, but also, I mean, I guess that would be a way to break the internet? I don't know. Again, this is something that I'm quite fascinated to see what Blizzard comes up with. And, if nothing else, we at least know that D.Va is getting a new skin. It's probably going to be a legendary skin just based on how he talks about it, but we'll have to wait and see to know for sure. I'm super excited because it does sound like this could be a rather unique and interesting addition. Now, moving past Anniversary, Jeff also confirmed that there will be two more features coming this summer and early in the fall. Once again, he didn't specify exactly what they were. However, he did clarify that they were more in line with what the community has been asking for, and also that they're specifically not a guild or clan system, and furthermore, that we aren't going to be getting a guild or clan system anytime in the near future. Now, this seemed rather odd to me, because at this past BlizzCon, the devs themselves talked about how they were working on a guild slash clan system, and it was apparently a pretty big feat that they were working on, because originally it had been intended to be released last fall, but they ended up having to bump it, and then they made some alterations where it was going to be like a Blizzard-wide clan system, where it would be for all the different games, not just Overwatch. But then to hear Jeff say now that we shouldn't be expecting a clan system, System like this anytime in the near future makes me wonder if they just straight up scrapped the idea or something. Maybe they only shelved it and are planning to come back to it at some point in the future. From what he talked about here, it sounds like it's a huge feat in order to get a functioning clan system that they think would actually benefit the game and that they would be interested in making something like this. But at the same time, you have to consider they're always saying that they're interested in adding these things which sound cool or seem like they'd be beneficial when really there's often a lot of technical reasons why they can't really do it. So they say, oh, we'd love to do this, but we can't, basically. And it could be that situation here. Maybe they decided that clans just simply wouldn't end up working. And maybe they're just something that's going to take so long that we shouldn't even be getting our hopes up for them in the near future. And the last of the important things Jeff Kaplan talked about in this interview was some kind of cool new PvE mode coming to PTR very soon. We had so much fun making Storm Rising. I hope you all enjoy it. Uh, there's a very cool PvP surprise coming very soon. Um, 
to PTR. Um, now, it's fair to assume that this is probably going to be coming to the PTR at the same time as the new Havana map. And additionally, this could actually be the same feature he mentioned earlier regarding the anniversary event. Since he wasn't very specific about what this anniversary event edition was even going to be, it's possible that it's going to be some kind of surprise new game mode. And keep in mind, when he says a new PvP game mode, I don't necessarily think he's talking about like a new map type for standard rotation, I think he's probably just talking about a new arcade game mode. So, you know, something like Deathmatch or Zero Gravity or whatever. Something that's not really going to fit into the standard map rotation, but it's going to be a fun way to, you know, just mix things up in the arcade. Once again, I'm very curious to see what they end up adding with that, and for the time being, I guess we really can only speculate. Anyways, thank you guys for watching through this video. There was a lot of information to cover, so I wanted to make sure that I went through and touched on all the important things that stuck out to me during this Jeff Kaplan interview. And once again, be sure to check out the live stream where he actually covered all this information, which I will have linked down in the description. And with that, thank you all so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts about the information Jeff Kaplan revealed. Are you excited that Sojourn is going to be a brand new hero at some point? Or are you curious about what these new features are going to be that are getting added? Either way, be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and share it with a friend if you really liked it. Subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit up the bell to never miss any of my future Overwatch content. This is Master Ian Gamer signing off, and until next time, have a great day.